I, I start again. So I, 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 my name is Alfredo Ortega. He is Orin Isaacson. Isak I want to talk about exploiting uh, digital cameras. Uh, there you go. So uh, we're going to talk about how to script uh, digital cameras, basically. How we reverse this script. This will not be uh, an exploitation at low level. This will be a high level exploitation. We actually are writing uh, interpreter uh, language uh, present in, in almost all PowerShot digital cameras. Um, we're going to talk about what we can do with this and what are the security consequences of, of it. OK, let's start with the basics. Uh, modern digital cameras, uh, I'm sure you are aware, uh, are uh, in fact powerful computers. They uh, almost all have an ARM processor um, and a lot of memory, and they are really fast computers. They are, uh, we have a, the, the, digital the, digital, uh, sorry, the digital cameras that we are studying doesn't have a complete memory man management unit. It has a memory protection unit. So it really can run a secure operative system, but it runs an operative system nevertheless. Uh, Canon digital cameras use uh, DRIOS. This is uh, uh, an operative system built by Canon. And uh, well, that's about it. We have uh, uh, complete, com complete computers. Uh, of course, we are not the first that uh, research into exploiting digital cameras. In fact, there is a huge project called CHD Key that is uh, it has a few years already, and he they uh, they are very 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 incredible guys. They they build a custom custom firmware for Canon digital cameras. They enhance functionality, but this really can be used to attack a camera because we can see here. This is the main problem that this approach for this modification to work. It uh, you must download a, a firmware modification inside the memory card, but m the memory card must be locked before the firmware can be executed. So this is not a really a good way to to exploit, to take over a, a digital, cam digital camera because you have to physically access the memory card and switch uh, to lo uh, switch the login. And also there are other uh, requirements like a, a special file system. They need FAT16, only working FAT16. So this is a great modification, but really can be used to attack a camera. That is why this project is, in fact, very secure. We want to see if we, there is another way. Okay. So we first try to uh, run our code, exploiting the image parsers inside the camera. Uh, this way. Um, if we could find a bug in the image parsers and write an exploit for it, we could take control of the camera as the user is trying to see an invalid message uh, image uh, in the camera's playback mode. Um, the ARM processor jumps to, to the, an exception handler when it tries to read or write an invalid memory address. So what we did is write a, in an exception handler to try to find the bugs, find, find bugs uh, when fasting the, the parsers. Um, we did find some bugs, but before writing an exploit for them, uh, or trying to write an exploit, we found another way that is better. The best thing about uh, writing an, an exploit for the image parsers are that this is binary. And function offsets change from camera model to model. So it would be probably be very difficult to write an exploit that works in a lot of models. Um, we found this other method that is the interpreter and the script. When we analyzed, uh, when, when we analyzed the firmware of one camera. Um, we used IDA Pro 
and we we can see a lot of interesting strings. Uh, these strings show that there are, there is a plain text parser inside the camera. Um, this this parser is composed of you know, two parts. One is the yak, that is yet another compiler compiler, and the other is flex, that is a lexical scanner. Um, well, we let our phone that, uh, well, I was saying, we find this, this parser, and this parser are commonly found in interpreters and compilers. We assume it was an interpreter as it makes more sense inside the camera. We later found we were not the first one to find, find this interpreter, but there is no public information on how to write a script for the cameras or, or any information on the syntax or uh, semantics of this language. And it is very difficult to just guess how to write an ex on a script for this language because any error causes the camera to simply shut down and there are no error message that say why the script is invalid. Okay. So we have we found a, a word language activated inside every camera. And so we have to reverse a complete language. I thought that is a little difficult. What uh, we, we have? We, we have how to execute the language. We have a, what are the requirements that a uh, memory card has to, to, uh, to have to, to execute a script. Um, they have a, a little file when the script is placed and some tags inside the, inside the, the boot sector. But most importantly, it doesn't require anything more than that. It doesn't require the, 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 the memory card to be locked. It doesn't require a special file system. So uh, if you have a, a, a malware running in your computer and you insert a memory card, this malware can inject code in your camera because you don't only have to remove the memory card, insert in your camera without doing anything else, and it will execute. So I say, well, that is very useful. Uh, but we need a reverse interpreter. It's not an instruction on an algorithm, but a complete language. Uh, so let's, uh, let's start from the beginning. What are the, the structure of this interpreter? Well, it's a very standard interpreter. Uh, we have a, a grammatical parser here, a, a lexical parser is lex and yak. By the way, lex uh, was built with uh, an idea of Donald Knut and, uh, no, I'm sorry, lex was built by Eric Schmidt, CEO of Google, and, par and uh, yak was built by Donald Knut. Is there software, open source software that have more than 30 years uh, old? But they are like the standards of build interpreters. Basically, you have the script here, and uh, the tokenizer, the Lex parser, will start read character by character and produce tokens. These tokens it can be while, print, uh, variables, names. They are basically tokens for any language. They are a feed to the grammatical parser, and the grammatical parser can either uh, produce code, so you have a compiler, or uh, interpret or execute functions, execute a program, and you have an interpreter. That's all. In this case, of course, the camera inside has an interpreter, not a compiler. It will be very crazy. You have a compiler in your camera, but you have an interpreter. So this is the function that does the parsing. Uh, this is a very complex function. We have. Uh, the string here is syntax error. The, the, uh, the string that we found and we, uh, we see that this is an interpreter, in fact. Uh, here we have a call to the lexical analyzer. And here's this little basic block here. Uh, so uh, we're going to start with uh, trying to do what tokens made our language. We, so we don't, know, we don't know even what language is or, or, the, or any of the rules. So this is a tokenizer. Uh, is very complex, as you can see. Uh, and in fact, it's a huge case. This is a case statement, the one for each token. And uh, the tokenizer, in fact, is a, a table based uh, regular expression. Basically, is a regular expression parser. That's why we really 
can't find the, to the individual tokens in memory. The tokens are coded inside a huge table that uh, this table uh, um, is fed to a state machine and the state machine recognizes tokens. So we, we couldn't find any tokens in the looking at the firmware or looking at the memory. We have to reverse the, the regular expression parcel. Uh, so here is a, a portion of the parser. The parser is open source, so we, we know that uh, we have the source code, but we don't have the tables. One idea that we have is to emulate this in a computer. You just, just pick up the table from memory and emulate. Uh, there is not a single table. There is a lot of tables in a, in a Lex parser. Uh, we, in this diagram, we, we look in the memory here. Uh, this is a table, in fact. We uh, implemented the table back to C code and just recompile a standard Lex parser and then brute force it. There is. So we're going to do a demonstration. We're going to run a demonstration of this, of this brute forcing process here. This, of course, is running in, in, uh, in, in my laptop because only we stole the stop, sorry. We pick up the tables. Here is, yeah, we are reinforcing every character. When you say success here, is that a token was successfully parsed or accepted for, uh, for the tokenizer. So every number is a valid token because numbers are tokens too. Uh, now we're going to start uh, parsing the operators. So the accept, every, this is our valid operator for this language. Uh, letters are also valid tokens because we can do variables, and we have here we, ca we have a, a token that is a function. Function is a valid token too, so we have a function. We have if with several case, if uh, uh, with uppercase, lowercase. We have uh, here sub sub is another token. We are accepting every token of this language, so we run this for a while, and we have this. We have. A lot of tokens uh, belong to this language, so maybe it's familiar to you. These are basic tokens, so this language is basic. Now we know that every camera have a basic interpreter inside, but uh, we don't have the grammatical structure. It can be millions of variations of basics. So uh, for that, we should build an emulator. Now we're in winter. Well, as, uh, as Alfredo was saying, uh, having the tokens was not enough. Um, as we, even if we tried some basic uh, scripts, very, sim very simple basic script, they appeared invalid. Uh, so we had to emulate the original firmware on an uh, emulator. We use QEMU that, is, that has the capability to emulate an ARM pr processor but can't emulate the whole camera. So we couldn't use it to boot the original firmware and try to, to parse a script with it. Instead, what we did is uh, capture the state of the machine, of the camera, as it was parsing a script, that is, capture all the registers and all the memory, and dump it to the memory card. Uh, and then take that information and resume the execution inside our emulator. To do this, to do this, uh, we couldn't just set a breakpoint inside the uh, interpreter and take control because uh, we are not sure that that's even possible. We had to use the deception handlers. What we did. It forced the script uh, uh, interpreter to raise an exception as it was beginning to parse the script. We can see from the source code of the flex scanner uh, that it tries to access an array, uh, an array with a value that is inside a static variable. And we change that value, and then as it, the processor tries try to access that value, it, it crashed, and then we could uh, dump all the state. Uh, to know which 
memory regions we need to dump, we just use the memory protection unit. Inside the, this unit, there are a lot of there are registers that define the valid memory uh, memory regions, and we only need two regions: the my memory and the ROM. Uh, to control the execution of the emulator, we used uh, the integrate GDB server, uh, and also the integration of GDB with Python. Did this way, we could write a Python script and control the execution from it. This Python script can set breakpoints, modify, modify the registers, and control as all aspects of the emulator. Well, uh, we need uh, to make some changes to the to the original firmware because we couldn't allow uh, it to call the operating system because it it wouldn't work. It would try to access some hardware registers that were not weren't emulated. Uh, so we uh, changed it the read function so we could. Uh, fit the emulator or script, and we did in a way that it read one character at the time. And this way, when the interpreter found an error as it was parsing the script, uh, we could uh, find exactly at which point uh, the the error was found. Well, this is the general way that we found out about the syntax. We tried a script and find out the, the location of the error, and then we change it until no error was found. These are three scripts. The last one is valid, syntactically, syntactically valid, but it doesn't do anything. This second slide shows that if you try to to call a script a function, uh, well, sorry, uh, outside the, the body of another function, that's an error. You can only call function from the body of other function. So we, this way, we we realized that there was there must be one function that that's the entry point. I'm going to show you now the emulator as it's running. The emulator is al already running. I'm just going to run the Python script. You can see here in blue uh, the script that is about to be fit. The, the emulator read all the script one character at a time and find, found out exactly where the error is found. In this case, var is, isn't defined. In this second demo, I'm going to show a valid script that has sent the entry point. So we arrived to a breakpoint that doesn't lead to code execution. This way, we later found about the entry point. This is the third demo that with the initialize function, that's the entry point. This script is totally valid. And we arrive to a breakpoint that that shows that code is about to be executed. This is a complete valid script that prints "Hello World" to the screen, camera screen. You can see that there are a lot of predefined functions inside the camera. Uh, Alfredo is going to talk about about. It. Okay, uh, at this time we have uh, the grammatical structure of the language, we have the tokens, but we, the language also have a lot of functions that we can call. In fact, this is wrong. There are 5,000 functions, sorry, 500, inside a uh, common Canon camera governing everything from the sensors, um, um, uh, mo little motors, um, accelerometers, CCD, Absolutely everything you can access from this language. And in fact, you can access the main memory of the kernel using poke and pick 
instructions because it's basic, like Commodore 64 basic. Uh, we we uh, started to build a, a, a document and a, a user guide of this language. Is here we are going to put it online uh, after after this. Uh, we are documenting all the functions. Uh, we don't have all, of course, because there are 500, but we have some of them. Uh, there are very interesting things about this language. Uh, for example, there are functions to read about the kernel process memory here. You can see uh, this is the equivalent of the top Unix command inside a camera. So how many processes do you think a camera can have? When it can have hundreds of pro uh, sorry, about 70, 70 process, uh, processes inside a, a Canon camera. All these processes governing from the buttons to the display, from the for keeping the CCD warm. They are uh, it's a very complete operative system inside this, this camera. I'm going to publish this document in short, so everybody can start building scripts. Uh, so okay, what well, we can do with with this language? Well, uh, because uh, it's difficult to do something with the camera, but some uh, you you can do uh, some stuff like we're going to show now. For example, you can, uh, the old school that we showed at the beginning. Uh, okay, here is, I'm going to show, this is the little school that we showed at the beginning. This is not new. Uh, but this is, we're going to uh, show this script in a lot of cameras and it should really work because it's basic. It's not uh, accessing any low level uh, system. Okay, you have, this is a, a cheaper camera, this is a 470 Canon, the, uh, the first one was g G10, one of the high-end cameras, but the script works perfectly. You want to test in your camera, Oren? Well, it will work in, in, ev in every power shot camera. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it works. Show it. Okay. Well, it works perfectly. We don't have any special code to choose between cameras. It's the same code. It works in every camera. Okay. So what else we can do with this script? Well, of course, we can uh, we can uh, make uh, pictures appear. We can put fake picture in the camera, for example. I'm going to show a demonstration about where you can't put any kind of image inside the camera. For example, uh, we're going to erase every picture inside this memory card. Okay, it's ready. So we're going to show that there is no picture in there. It's like a magic trick. There's no picture there. So we're going to launch the exploit. Okay. Launch it. There is. Exploit deployed. And then we will turn on the camera again. We know there is a picture of uh, General Perón there. Of course, this picture didn't exist before. But we put it there. Our exploit just made a picture appear. So this is uh, not so dangerous uh, until you start putting pictures of illegal things in the cameras and then you have to explain to police uh, that your camera has a virus. But we have a, a, a more serious exploit here. It's about, maybe you have heard. This, is, this exploit is very new. It's, uh, it's the linking exploit that was uh, made public just a week, weeks ago. I have a SD without 
the the files that uh, that ex exploit this bug, but there is a script for the camera that will launch this exploit. Okay, let's try. We don't have space for for the USBs here. First, we're gonna show the memory card. Nothing happened here, but this is the script. You can see it here. This is the script that launched the link exploit. It just creates a lot of of links inside the the memory card. Uh, it doesn't have eject, so we're gonna eject it anyway. We're gonna run the exploit in any camera. In fact, it can be anyone. We're gonna launch this one. This one, the cheapest. Let's see if this works, because if it doesn't work, we have a video, so we can believe it. Sorry. Uh, there is. You say export ready, and then you just remote the memory card. You see, it is work because we never tested this really. Uh, and whoops. Ah, oh. oh, well, right. execution. Well, uh, this is the famous link exploit that you, when you execute, uh, uh, when you see a, um, a memory card, uh, it just uh, for a for a. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. This this wasn't supposed to be this way because we forgot to to reset the explorer process. Uh, the problem with this is that uh, once we showed the empty memory card. Uh, the shortcuts were still there, uh, so I'm going to show it uh, after resetting the explorer process. Okay, we got a video that we're gonna blow out that it works. When in fact, kind of work it, but not like we we wanted to do. This is a real exploit that we, we basically we are just copying a file in the in the memory card, and when you s just saw the file, it will execute code like this one, like this showing jar here. Of course, you can execute any kind of code. And well, that's countermeasures. It's about countermeasures. Uh, we had. You have to be ready uh, to be sure that there are no files with these extensions, uh, as these are necessary to uh, launch chdk or the script. So, if there are not eight of these uh, files in your memory card, you are safe from this. Um, Canon cameras use picture transfer protocol. Uh, and that means uh, the c when the computer is connected to the camera through the USB cable, uh, it, the computer cast the ha can't read the root de directory of the memory card. So the good news is that you can get infected through the USB cable, but the bad thing is that no antivirus can scan the whole memory card when it's connected by the USB cable to the camera. Well, so that's all. We have a language that we found inside every PowerShot camera. Uh, we documented it. We're going to put it online. So if you have a, a digital camera, now you have a, a general purpose computer that you can use to program in basic. It will run in every power. No, not, I don't know it's everyone, but every PowerShot camera that we test. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much.